Uh, the news from Wall Street has shaken the American people's faith in our economy. The situation with Lehman Brothers and other financial institutions is the latest in a wave of crises that have generated enormous uncertainty about the future of our financial markets. So, you may have heard about the whole Robin Hood and Wall Street bet event that took place earlier this year. But I'm not here to bore you again with the same story. I think there is a bigger trend at play that people are missing. Something very interesting has been happening over the past 12-13 years that is literally reshaping our society, the future of inequality and the broader economy. I am talking about the gamification of investing and the culture war between millennials and boomers when it comes to investing. It is the reason for why we are where we are today. And if you have to learn anything from it, it is that what happened earlier this year may just be the beginning of a long-term war. Allow me to explain myself. Let me tie it back, Vlad, to what, to what we were talking about before. So do you think that it's okay if we're trying to build a generation of investors to give them access to margin as easily as some apps, including Robinhood does, and then separately allows them to trade highly transactional, high vol instruments like options on top of that with margin? What do you think about that just as a general philosophy? Forget business building for a second. Armchair investors rejoice. GameStop is back at it again. Shares skyrocketed more than 100% on Wednesday, closing at just under $92 a share. And trading of the retailer stock was even halted twice because of that surge. Ted, when a 20-year-old Naperville man opened his stock trading app on his phone, it showed him close to a million dollars in the red. And soon after, Alexander Kearns committed suicide. WGN's Eric Rung is live in Wilmette tonight, where he talked to the man's relative to understand exactly what happened. Eric. Well, good evening. A very sad story all the way around, no matter how you look at it here. One way to kind of think about this is when you go to your uh, banking app and you hit that app and you see all of your balances, you see your checking, your savings, your credit card balances. Well, in this case, the 20-year-old opened his investment app and saw that he had close to $730,000 in a negative cash balance. Earlier this year, I'm sure you ask yourself, how did we get here? Well, let me tell you, you are not alone. I did some digging and what I found out was fascinating. Like every story, the story I'm about to tell you today has a beginning. This one began with the financial crisis in 2008. What happened next led to the beginning of the culture war between millennials and boomers and the rise of the gamification of investing. It is the story of how an entire generation lost faith in our financial system and decided to take it upon themselves to become financially free. But with everything that has happened over the past decade, we can wonder if this new path is leading to a better outcome and a more equal society. On September 29, 2008, the stock market had its largest one-day drop in history. It was one of the worst days of the financial crisis. People were losing their homes, losing their jobs, and everything seemed to be coming down. On October 3, 2008, Congress passed a $700 billion plan to bail out the banks. It was a way for them to bring back life into a financial system that was dying. The only issue with that? They had to use taxpayer money to help revive a system that had taken advantage of the middle class. If you were a middle class worker or part of a middle class family, 
this was a nail in the coffin. I could try to give you a glimpse of how it felt like being part of the middle class, but let me just read a few lines from an open letter. And this open letter was written by one user from Reddit to Melvin Capital during the GME and Robin Hood mania that happened earlier this year. Quote, I was in my early teens during the 08 crisis. I vividly remember the enormous repercussions that the reckless actions by those on Wall Street had in my personal life and the lives of those close to me. When that crisis hit our family, we were able to keep our little house, but we lived off of pancake mix and powdered milk and beans and rice for a year. To Melvin Capital, you stand for everything that I hated during that time. Your continued existence is a sharp reminder that the ones in charge of so much hardship during the 08 crisis were not punished." End quote. While millions of people were suffering worldwide, the rich were bailed out, and not a single executive banker went to jail. Now, I don't know about you, but just imagine how it felt like seeing this happen. Imagine sitting at home, watching your parents cry because they just lost their jobs. And then you turn on the TV and see the government giving money to the rich. How would you feel? If you're a millennial, the answer was simple. I just felt really betrayed by the system. For those of us that graduated into the worst economy since the Great Depression, many of us haven't gotten over it. I had this idea and this dream and this vision of where my life was going to go. And then I had to put it on hold because there weren't jobs out there. As a millennial in 2008, you were entering the workforce during the worst crisis since the Great Depression. You had student loans to pay and no real way to accumulate wealth because unemployment was extremely high. You realized that every promise made to you by baby boomers about growing up and becoming financially successful was a lie. For the first time, your generation was about to make less money than your parents and your grandparents. You became part of what we call the new lost generation. Just like the lost generation of the 1920s, you also had no hope in the future. You became disoriented, directionless, with no idea about what was about to happen next. I just felt really betrayed by the system, even though I was like complying to what is to be like legitimate in the system. So. You started building a strong resentment toward the system. You started believing that the system was rigged against you and your generation. You lost faith in the old ways of working and saving up for retirement. For you, there was no point in investing in stocks and making 1% gains per year. The system was rigged and you needed to find a new way to make money and really fast. It was time to rewrite the rules of the game. It was time to play a different game. It was time to take control of the game. As a millennial, you had one question keeping you up at night. How do I make the rich pay for what they did in 2008? So at first, you decided to go in the streets and protest. In September 2011, you started the Occupy Wall Street movement out of a hashtag on Twitter. You went to the financial district of New York City as a way to protest and fight against inequality. It was a way for you to voice your concerns about a system that was collapsing. So you showed up with a thousand people screaming, we are the 99%. It was a very powerful slogan, I will admit that. You were referring to the top 1% of Americans who saw their incomes rise way more than the bottom 99%. This was the first time that the term 99% was used and it became a rallying cry. In theory, your movement was the right one. You were trying to fight against inequality. You were trying to fight for a more equal system. But the issue is that just when the action was getting started, the police came and started arresting people. The movement couldn't continue in person and you knew it. You were faced with a question, how do I continue the fight against Wall Street? You had two possible options facing you. The first option was to keep protesting in the streets. The second option was to try to use the internet to keep the movement going. There was no way to keep the protest going in person, so you had to use option two. And to be able to do that, you needed the right tools, you needed the right people, and you needed the right trends. 
and that is when the war really got interesting. To start with the right trends, 2011 was a time when social media adoption was increasing. The Occupy Wall Street movement, for example, was born out of a hashtag on Twitter, and it showed the power of social media to unite people for a common cause. There was a rise in the use of social media all over the world, and with places like Reddit, Facebook, or Twitter, people were gathering in communities. It was only a matter of time until people started creating communities around finance and investing. And that is when Jamie Rogozinski came into the scene and connected the right people together. Uh, the inspiration was a vacuum of, of a space for people that were looking to get involved with the markets in, in a way that was more aggressive, meaning more risk, more uh, reward. Jamie founded Wall Street Bet on Reddit in 2012, just a few months after the Occupy Wall Street movement began. He was tired of all of the bullshit and lies coming from Wall Street, and he wanted to create a community of people who will trade together in the hope of making money fast. What Jamie understood was that the only way for millennials to truly fight against Wall Street was to play the same game as them. He brought the Occupy Wall Street movement from the streets to online forums. In April 2013, somewhere in California, two guys were working on the next big thing. They were trying to bring the right tools to the Occupy Wall Street movement. Vlad Tenev and Beju Bat launched Robin Hood with the goal of taking from the rich and giving back to the poor. You ever think about trading stocks? I mean, you can now, of course. There's always been a cost, usually up to 10 bucks for every single trade. That adds up. No way around it for people like you and me. Until now. They wanted to democratize investing and make it accessible to the masses. They launched commission-free trading and disrupted the entire financial industry. For the first time in history, people could buy and sell stocks without paying fees and they didn't need a minimum amount to invest. Everything was perfectly aligning for millennials who were hurt by the 2008 crisis. Now, they had the right tools, they had the right trends, and they had the right people. It was time to start playing the game and redefine the rules. My co-founder Vlad and I were working, we were building a technology startup in New York in financial services. And a lot of the events actually around the Occupy Wall Street movement really made us uh, kind of want to do something that we thought was more positive and, and forward-looking with, uh, with ourselves. And so the objective was always to build a product that allowed consumers that previously didn't have access to a service like the stock market to get access. As the years went by, the economy started recovering and the number of millennial investors started increasing. Many of them were joining Wall Street Bets to learn more about the stock market and connect with like-minded people. But the resentment against Wall Street caused by the 2008 crisis didn't go away. The spirit of the Occupy Wall Street movement was still alive and most of the millennials joining Wall Street Bets had one thing in common. They hated Wall Street and thought that the financial system was broken. Wall Street bets became a vessel through which they could unite and trade together to fight the big guys. But the issue with this whole movement is that they were about to enter a war they couldn't win. And that's because of the approach they used to invest. Most people who started investing over the past decade did so through mobile trading apps like Robinhood. When Robinhood launched in 2013, it had to be innovative to attract new users and it had to make an entire generation love investing. So they gamified the entire process and used a few tricks to attract people and make the app more addictive. For example, you could refer a friend and win a stock and the stock that you won came in the form of a lottery ticket that you had to scratch. They also added confettis on the screen to celebrate your first trade. Then. They copied the same behavior hacks used by social media companies in Silicon Valley to keep you hooked. They sent you endless notifications urging you to buy and sell stocks, and first-time traders were becoming more active. The last thing they did to make the game more interesting is that they used vivid colors like green and red flashing in front of your eyes to amplify your money moves. The app pushed you to become an active trader, and because Robinhood makes more money when you trade, it did everything to keep you hooked. And for 
referred to. Robinhood makes money because when they route that trade, the payment that goes back, a certain amount of it will go to Robinhood. On top of the gamification trend that was happening, social media was also having a huge impact on the investing world. First, because social media made investing a social game. People shared screenshots, videos, and stock tips on Wall Street bets and all over the internet. And second, because social media rewired our brains to think short term instead of long term, we saw a decrease in our attention span. In the investing world, this was reflected by a shorter holding period for stocks. This is wiring your brain for super fast feedback. It's the same brain you're using to build a company. Don't think they're not the same. So you're training your brain here, whether you think it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not, acknowledge that these things where you're spending hours a day are rewiring your psychology and physiology in a way that now you have to use to go and figure out how to be productive in the commercial world. So if you don't change this, you are going to get the same behaviors over here. Change this. There's a reason why Steve Jobs was like anti-social media. When you combine the rise of social media with the gamification of investing and the spirit of the Occupy Wall Street movement, you get meme stocks. A meme stock is a stock which value is deeply influenced by social media users. In many cases, these stocks increase in value not because a company is doing well financially, but because people on Reddit or YouTube are encouraging other people to buy them. In a lot of cases, meme stocks are stocks that Wall Street hate. We saw it with the Tesla stock, which was the first meme stock. This was the real beginning of the culture war between the boomers and millennials, between the Wall Street guys and the little guys, and between institutional investors and retail investors. Many people who traded Tesla stock believed in Elon Musk and the future of Tesla. But I think they also traded the stock because they wanted to see Wall Street fail. Tesla was one of the most shorted stock in the market, and it became fun to take the opposite side of Wall Street. With meme stocks, trading became a game where people sometimes even forgot that they were taking real actions with real money and real life outcomes. It became fun to just buy and sell stocks with the hope of making money. The best example of this was what happened earlier this year. Stocks like GME, AMC, Nokia, and other meme stocks were being pumped by Wall Street Bet and Robinhood users. In many cases, people were not investing because they believed in these companies. They were investing to get back at Wall Street for everything they went through in 2008. And that's where the problem lies. By trying to fight Wall Street, millennials created a casino of their own on the internet. The protests from the Occupy Wall Street movement turned into a huge online casino where each player is hoping to win big through the next meme stock. All of this raises a lot of questions. Are there any ethical considerations that need to be made when it comes to gamifying money and giving access to extremely risky financial instruments to people? Can we truly blame social media and trading apps for what happened over the past decade? Is all of this part of a bigger trend that has been happening? These are questions that will require me to do another video on the topic. But if you are interested in this line of thinking and this storyline, you should check out Wall Street Bets, How Boomers Made the World's Biggest Casino for Millennials by Jamie Rogozinski, the founder of Wall Street Bets. First of all, Thank you so much for getting to this one. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is thank you for helping me grow past 100 subscribers. The community now has over 100 people. And as I like to say, this is only day one. This is only the beginning. So we're going to get uh, to a point where we'll have a lot more crazy people in here. Uh, I appreciate you watching you the video to this point. If you have any thoughts, comments, please comment below. If you enjoyed watching the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And if you would like me to do a part two where I explore some of the questions that I ask at the end of the video, definitely let me know. Last but not least, if you truly, truly want to help the channel grow, please take some time and share this video with some of your friends who may be interested in what happened in the GameStop and Robinhood mania. 
and uh, this may help them understand better so with that being said very very grateful for you for even making it to this one watching the entire video uh, I will catch you next time and it will be sooner than you think because I'm trying to really speed up now with that being said have a good one and peace